Good afternoon, Peter Gertz. I'm a psychiatrist. Let's talk about benzodiazepines and how dangerous they are or how not that dangerous they are. And some psychiatrists don't want to prescribe benzodiazepines at all because they can be abused, they can be addictive, they can cause falls. So there are definite downsides. But on the other hand, a lot of patients do quite well with benzodiazepines, even long term over years and do not abuse them, do not become addicted. So like with many things, there are various aspects to look at. And I myself took a benzodiazepine years ago for a while for sleep, temazepam. And after I stopped it, I did have some trouble with sleep. So it was not that easy to stop taking it. So in general, benzodiazepines are used for anxiety, to help with sleep, for seizures, to treat seizures, for muscle relaxation. Those are some examples of the uses of benzodiazepines. And in general, in overdose, if you just were to, if someone were just to overdose only with a benzodiazepine, then it would be unlikely for them to die from the overdose. So in overdose alone, they tend to be relatively safe. However, if you combine them with other drugs that are sedating, like opiates or barbiturates, then it can be quite dangerous and lethal. So that's why in general in this country, in the US, people are looking very closely at patients who are on a combination of an opiate and a benzodiazepine, which is quite a few patients still but a lot less patients than before. So that's definitely something that can be dangerous, a combination of other sedating drugs and benzodiazepine. Another downside of benzodiazepine is withdrawals. So you can get withdrawal symptoms from stopping a benzodiazepine abruptly or from decreasing the dose in a major way. Usually if you decrease it a little bit, you're not gonna get major withdrawal. And from abruptly stopping a benzodiazepine, you could even have a seizure. So that is one major risk with stopping a benzodiazepine abruptly is you could have a seizure or other withdrawal symptoms like tremor. And that's something that's more common with the benzodiazepines that are short acting. And I'll get to examples further into this little talk. So briefly, let's talk about some of the aspects of benzodiazepines that are worth knowing. Benzodiazepines bind to the benzodiazepine site of what is called the GABA-A receptor, and they thereby lead to opening of the chloride channel and that means they increase the frequency of the opening of the chloride channel and thereby produce hyperpolarization of the neuron. And barbiturates, on the other hand, bind to the barbiturate site of the GABA-A receptor and open the chloride channel also, but they do it by increasing the duration of the opening of the chloride channel. Some examples of benzodiazepines are diazepam, lorazepam, alprazolam, clonazepam. And one thing to look at with benzodiazepines is what we call their potency. So some drugs you may need 15 milligrams to have a good effect. Some drugs you may need 0 0.5 milligrams to have an effect. So the lower milligram size drugs the lower milligram dose drugs tend to be the more potent drugs, which is not necessarily that meaningful, but it's worth knowing if you wanna compare doses that are equally effective. So for diazepam five milligrams, you would need a dose of lorazepam of about one milligram to be as effective, and you would need a dose of alprazolam, which in America is called Xanax, you would need a dose of 0 0.5 milligrams of alprazolam to be equivalent to five milligrams of diazepam. And with clonazepam, you'd need a dose of 0 0.25 milligrams of clonazepam to be equivalent to a five milligram dose of diazepam. So if you wanna remember some equivalent doses, it's worth remembering these. Diazepam, five milligrams, 
equivalent to lorazepam, one milligram, equivalent to alprazolam, 0.5 milligrams, equivalent to clonazepam, 0.25 milligrams. Another aspect to look at with benzodiazepines is what we call the half-life, so the serum half-life, which means the time it takes from the maximum level in the serum to get from the maximum level in the serum to half of that. So that's what we call the half-life. So diazepam acts very long. The duration of action is very long. So the half-life of diazepam is about ballpark 70 hours. Compared to lorazepam, that has a ballpark half-life of 15 hours. Alprazolam has a ballpark half-life of 10 hours. And the clonazepam has a ballpark half-life of 30 hours. So they're quite different in their half-lives, in their duration of action, and that can cause potential problems if you wanna stop taking a short-acting benzodiazepine abruptly, that can more easily cause withdrawal symptoms in general than stopping a long-acting benzodiazepine. So stopping alprazolam tends to be quite a bit more difficult than stopping diazepam. Another thing to look at is metabolism. So benzodiazepines often are oxidized or otherwise metabolized in the liver, except for three. There are three exceptions, lorazepam, oxazepam, and temazepam. Those three benzodiazepines are not oxidized or otherwise metabolized. They're just conjugated with glucuronic acid. So they tend to be easier on the liver and they tend to be easier to cope with for people with liver dysfunction. So again, people remember LOT, lorazepam, oxazepam, temazepam. They tend to be easier on the liver. Problems from benzodiazepines include memory issues, falls, addiction potentially, rebound withdrawal, even between doses, with short-acting benzodiazepines. So alprazolam, if you take it in the morning and you don't take another dose soon enough, you may, during the day, get rebound withdrawal. So feel anxious and feel like you need another dose of alprazolam. And the problem with that is the anxiety that you feel may not be the primary, primary, primary anxiety that you felt and that you needed the alprazolam for, but it may be actually a withdrawal symptom from the alprazolam wearing off in your blood and leading to anxiety by the wearing off. So it may not be the primary anxiety that you wanna take the alprazolam for, it may just be the wearing off of the alprazolam. So that can be like a cycle that can be quite problematic and potentially dangerous. So. If someone has anxiety, takes alprazolam, then it wears off, they wanna take another alprazolam just from the alprazolam wearing off sometimes. So that can be a problem. One good thing about the benzodiazepines is they tend not to have serious cardiac side effects or gastrointestinal side effects as opposed to other psychiatric medications. And one thing to consider and like I said, some psychiatrists do not want to prescribe benzodiazepines at all because of the problems, some of which I mentioned. But in my experience, it varies a lot between patients. So some patients, you give them a dose of benzodiazepine, of a benzodiazepine, they want to increase it pretty quickly. And then they keep on wanting to increase it. They say it's not effective anymore. And then you have a problem. And you may need to detox them from the benzodiazepine in order for the benzodiazepine to be effective again. And that actually happened with a patient of mine. I would, we would need to periodically detox her from her benzodiazepine in order for it to be effective again. And ultimately, as far as I recall, ultimately she was able to get off of it though. So some patients have that problem that they wanna increase the dose and wanna keep increasing the dose However, other patients are totally different. They are on a steady dose for years and it's effective and they don't need to change anything. So it really varies 
in my experience and my opinion. So I do prescribe a good amount of benzodiazepines. I try to minimize prescribing them because of the downsides, but I do still prescribe a good amount, good amount of benzodiazepines. And also with tapering off, if someone wants to stop taking a benzodiazepine, for some people that can be quite difficult and they have a very hard time getting off it. They become very anxious, may develop tremor. And other patients have a lot less difficulty tapering off. But you definitely do not want to stop a benzodiazepine, especially at higher doses abruptly. You want to taper it down gradually and sometimes very gradually to avoid withdrawal problems like potentially seizures. Thank you.